Iowa State Cyclones, eight and one in Big 12 play, nine and three overall. And we begin with the team where I don't have many questions. I mean, they bring back so much. They've got one of the best, one of the two best quarterbacks in the Big 12. Uh, the defense is going to be uh, bringing back a ton of starters. The only two positions I had circles were circled were wide receiver and defensive line, both places where it sounds like even Matt Campbell and his staff just sort of have a handful of guys and, and we'll see who emerges at those two positions, but I don't have a lot of concerns. I think Iowa state should be good. And the questions that stand out to me are ones that we really ask in August where it's like, all right, expectations. Are you going to go do it? Are you going to make a playoff run? It feels very big picture right now because so many, so many of our, um, you know, day to day position by position questions, they seem to already be answered even before spring practice starts. Okay. But what are your expectations for Iowa state? That they compete for a big 12 championship in a college football playoff spot, but not a playoff. Oh, wait. So you think they could compete for a playoff spot? They can't. I mean, I think that's what they're expect. Yeah. I I think that that should be their, their expectation. I'm not picking it, but I I think that you got to go into the year, given everything that's in place in the season you had, gotta say, all right, let's go. Let's make a run at it. And Danny, you think they can get there too? Well, I think, no, I would not pick them to do it. I think there'll be a trendy, trendy pick uh, from a lot of people. A lot of returners, Brock Purdy coming back, Brees Hall coming back. I think a lot of people will be on Iowa State. And it's kind of like, I I don't want this to sound offensive to Iowa State fans, but we talk about certain teams. We talk about returning starters, right? Um, And if, you know, if you're a bad team, is that a good thing? Well, with Iowa State, are their returning starters good enough for whoever's Oklahoma's going to replace people with, you know, in Texas and the other teams that are up there. Now we'll say this, they've cut the gap where they're in that upper tier of talent in the big 12. I just, it's kind of like Alabama in the sec. Like you got to have something special to pick a different team other than Alabama to win the sec. Same thing with Clemson and the ACC and same thing with Ohio state. And I don't know if, the talent is special enough to make me go out on a limb and say, man, this team is going to win the big 12 and, and, cont- er, and excuse me, knock off Oklahoma and get to a playoff spot. Cause yeah, if they win the big 12 with one loss, they're in the conversation. So, yeah, that's, I, I think we're all on the same page here. Cause going into the spring, I don't have too many questions about this team because I think it was a good team last year. I think it's been a good team the last few years, but I also, like what you're saying, Danny, like everybody in the world is going to be on Iowa State this year. They're going to be an underdog, which is kind of causing me to back off because it's like, I get it. I understand why people are high on it. They've got a ton of people coming back. They've got a good quarterback. They've got a really good coach. They've got a good coaching staff, and they've shown an ability to really develop pro- the program, develop the players, and to a certain extent, overachieve based on the talent that they have. It's just there's still a part of me that looks at last year with how crazy things were in the conditions that everybody was playing in. Like that's the first time Iowa state has ever finished a season in the top 10 of the AP poll. Like they finished at number nine in the final rankings. I think it's only the third or fourth time they've ever finished a season period ranked. That's true. And it's like, I have a difficult time looking at the history and results of this program in the long haul thinking, okay, that's just the norm. Now they're going to be a top 10 team. They're going to compete for a big 12 title, all that stuff. I think that they can, it's just, I don't have, like I said, going into this spring, I'm not looking at this like, hmm, I need to see this. I need to see this. I think I know what I'm going to get with Iowa State. It's just I think I'm probably going to get eight and four. And I think it's going to be a good eight and four. And there's going to be some wins that they should win, but they're going to lose some close games, you know, that they have a chance to win. I think that's just the way things are going to work out. Because when I still compare this team to the rest of the Big 12, and we're going to go through the rest of the conferences, it stands, obviously, it's just not as talented a team as it has to compete with to win the conference. So I think it's going to be a very solid team. I just, I, I don't see another top 10 season coming. I, I could see it. Um, I, I agree with, with, with the points you guys made uh, the, I think the downside risk with Iowa state is, is greater than the upside risk, right? They see, I, I think they were very close to maximizing, you know, the, the win total based on the talent that they have. And yet they bring back, you know, an absolute ton of experience, Right, you have a lot of guys who have played a lot of a lot of high quality football here. It is worth noting that the team we'll probably talk about next or, or the one after. Uh, look, you kind of had to get Oklahoma last year. We all said this as part of our preseason narrative. And Iowa State, they got them once. They didn't get them twice. You know, they obviously lost. 
in the championship game. But if I think like, what are the next steps this team can take? First thing they have to do, I, I think is, is replace Bailey, right? As a pass rusher. I mean, pressure rate of 10%, seven sacks on the year. I mean, he was one of their best pass rushers, 29 pressures and, you know, like forcing 14 incompletes interceptions. That's, that's a fairly big deal, you know, based on, on his pressure. So they, they got to figure out a way to replace Bailey. Um, I, I will say that Lawrence White basically like never left the field. He had 377 coverage snaps for those guys. So that not that he was an amazing player, but the, that that's a not a zero loss. But my main concern for this team, uh, really, guys, is is the receiver position. Um, I, I, they did not do a good job of getting the ball down the field last year. They, they were what ninety something, I think, in passing explosiveness. Just not a not a team that really had guys who scared you on the outside. I mean, Xavier Hutchinson w- was their best receiver by far, and and yet, I mean, you know, not not great. Just a solid player. I they need to have somebody step up at receiver, I think, because I very much doubt that Oklahoma is going to be that down in terms of firepower two years in a row. Yeah, because oh. if, if you look at the efficiency aspect of it, like on defense, if you want to go by points per drive, Iowa State and Oklahoma were nearly identical. Like Iowa State allowed 1.55 points per drive and Oklahoma allowed 1.59. But if you go to the offensive side of the ball, there was a huge gap between Oklahoma and Iowa State. Oklahoma finished first in the Big 12, averaging 3.19 points per drive. Iowa State was third. They were behind Texas at only 2.71. And I just, I think that the results last year weren't, like, not to take anything away because they had the best regular season record. They did beat Oklahoma once. Obviously, Oklahoma won the title game against them. But I just don't think the results were fairly accurate. And as I mentioned at times during last year, I thought it was just karma coming back for an Iowa state team that had played better at its record in the previous years was getting some of the better luck that it didn't get in the last few years. And it kind of just evened out last year. But when it showed up in the big 12 championship game, it, it was every bit the part. I mean, they, you're right. They lost Oklahoma got him, but that game was 27, 21 and Oklahoma didn't get in the end zone after halftime. Like I, I kind of think that I'm looking at it more as like, this is the window, right? Like you were right there in the big 12 title game and couldn't get it done. You got it another year, kind of the same group bringing it back. I, I kind of feel like they should go in with confidence that they can beat Oklahoma again. I don't, I mean, beating Oklahoma twice, you, we all know that we're not going to bet on that, but I, I don't think that it was like they got outclassed in the big 12 title game. Maybe TCU a couple years ago was one example of that where maybe TCU won the regular season, but then when Oklahoma played them in the championship game, just dusted them. I, I kind of think that Iowa state defensively, they were facing one of the better versions of Oklahoma and they still did a good job against it. So it's uh, I, I think that it's fair to put them on that championship level tier with them for this year, not big picture since you've only finished in the AP top 25 at the end of the season, three or four times. What Brown. are the odds we look back and we say, oh, shoot, 2020 was the window for uh, Iowa state. If, uh, if like Brees Hall goes down with an injury, or if they just continue to not like to score in, in the low 20s in their biggest games. I mean, 21 against Oklahoma, you know, 23 against Texas, 21 in the lost Oklahoma State. Um, you know, like that offense, it's a good offense. It's just, it's not an explosive offense yet. When they need That's, to reach back and, and, you know, pump 98 in the ninth inning, they don't have it. No, mm-hmm. it's not how they're built. Do you guys remember preseason last year? Brock Purdy was supposed to be like, potential first rounder like there was a lot of love coming Brock Purdy's way that he was going to be way one of the top tier quarterbacks in the country and of course when you set the bar that high and the expectation that high when you play much less than that <laughs> less than the expectations uh you know it makes it look a lot worse but he's they got to get more out of Brock Purdy too I mean they relied on Brees Hall which was fantastic I mean he was probably the surprise of the season out of the big 12 with uh, uh, Hubbard being the guy that was supposed to be taking all the reps, but I still think Brock Purdy's got to give us more if they want to, you know, take down Oklahoma. He looked like an NFC East quarterback winning ugly games in the mid twenties, figuring out ways to get it done. 